the Git repository management tool is included in most versions of Linux, at least the desktop versions, but it's not included with Windows. To install on Windows, go out to the Git download page, git-scm.com. For Windows 10, you'll want to download the 64-bit version. If you have another version of Windows, you'll need to find out if it's a 32 or a 64-bit version and then download the appropriate setup. Save the file to a place that you can find this executable. By default, this is typically going to be your downloads directory. I've saved mine to my downloads directory. Double click on the exe and give the program permission to run if the security warning pops up. This program needs administrative privileges in order to be able to install into the program files directory. So you're going to get a UAC pop-up in later versions of Windows and you'll need to hit yes to allow it to install these files. Accept the license. You can change the default installation directory, but the default directory is just fine. You can decide what you want to add. You may want to add a desktop icon if you want to be able to start the program up later without searching for it in the Windows Start menu. You can click through the rest of the prompts. When you get to the screen adjusting your path environment, go ahead and add the environment variable so that when you're on the Windows command line, you can just type git and you don't have to type the full path to the executable. Also, when you get to the line ending conversions, this is talking about the different style of line endings between Linux and Windows. Linux just uses a line feed, and there's no carriage return on the end of it. Windows, however, has a carriage return and a line feed. If you don't have the carriage return in Windows, all the lines appear to run together in tools that are not aware, like Notepad. Although in Windows, you can always use WordPad, which recognizes both the Windows and Linux line endings. Go with the defaults if you're not sure. Once the installation process starts, it may take some time to install. Depends on how fast files can be written out to the hard drive, but it's around 200 megabyte installation. Once installation is done, you can look at the release notes that will tell you about the latest features in whatever version you downloaded. And then when you launch the program, it will bring up the console. And this works a lot like Git does in Linux. So you can use ls and other bash-like commands. You don't have to use the dir. It's normally built into Windows. Also, some shortcuts like Control l will clear the screen. By default, you'll be in C users and then your directory under whatever username you use to log into Windows. You can practice by cloning a directory. So for example, in this Git pod project, you can click on clone or download and then copy the URL that's given here, go back to the command line and type in git clone and then the path. So just like in Linux, the git clone followed by the path will download this project into the directory specified by the file name in the path.
The amount of time it takes to download the project is going to depend greatly on your bandwidth and the size of the project. Most importantly, the size of the project itself. When you're done, you should be able to see a new folder that matches the name of the project. And inside will be the project files downloaded from the site. These files that are downloaded should match the files that were shown in the project itself on GitHub.